Okay, can you see my screen, everybody, and hear me? Yes. Yes, Kapil, please go on. Okay, so um, uh, just give me one. So I'm going to talk on uh, tibialis anterior tendon transfer for uh, residual uh, deformity in club foot. It's a really common problem, and about a uh, close to 20-30% of these club feet children are uh, really going to end up uh, needing this procedure. So uh, let's uh, look at the indications for this procedure. The primary indication is a child with a corrected club foot who has a dynamic supination in the swing phase uh, of the gait. And you can see this child walking here. Uh, you can see the front and back of the foot, which looks nicely corrected. But when he walks, he turns his foot inside. And uh, that's the typical dynamic supination that one sees uh, with these children. Uh, uh, extended indication in some of the children, maybe early recurrence uh, uh, in a child who's non-compliant uh, with the brace. And uh, it's really not something that you want to push, but sometimes I've used it as a kind of a dynamic um, uh, kind of force on the lateral side, which prevents uh, early recurrence. Okay. So how to check for the tibialis anterior overactivity? This is the most challenging part uh, of the examination. Uh, what I do is I ask the child to stand up and I will ask him to dorsiflex the ankle. I ask them to lean against the wall and dorsiflex the ankle. And you can see that on the left side, the foot comes up nicely, but on the right side or the affected side, they really invert and supinate it. So this is an easy test to do. And these children who are three to four years of uh, age, they will follow your instructions and be able to carry out the simple test. And it helps you to distinguish between uh, which is the child who really has the tibialis anterior, which is causing the uh, deform deformation in the gait. Uh, well, we need to, uh, of course, watch out for other causes for intoing, such as residual adductus. Uh, as you see in this child, he's got some uh, foot deformity when he stands up. And if you really take an end-on view of the foot, you can see that there's a adduction deformity of the foot. And then internal tibial torsion is another um, problem which we need to look out for. This is a child, you can see his um, left foot is uh, slightly deformed. Uh, that's how he walks. And uh, when you ask him to do the dorsiflexion test, the foot comes up nicely and you can see that he's really not uh, supinating uh, the foot. And uh, when you look at him uh, on the table, you can see that the foot is uh, turned in and there's uh, the thigh foot angle clearly indicates that it's a case of an internal tibial torsion. So this child is not going to do well with the tibialis anterior tendon transfer. And we really need to sift out these children before we go in and do the surgery. So who's the ideal candidate? The child needs to be about three to five years of age. It's uh, typically a conservatively treated club foot. The foot needs to be supple with uh, abduction of about 50 degrees and dorsiflexion of more than 15 degrees. And typically by three years, you uh, start seeing the ossification of the lateral cuneiform, where is, uh, uh, which is the point where you're going to transfer the tendon. So you need to make sure that you do it in a child in whom you can visualize the uh, tendon. And uh, that's just examining the child uh, prior to uh, the procedure. And uh, you want to make sure that the tailor head has, uh, is not prominent or standing out. The foot needs to be a corrected club foot. Uh, typically, one needs to do a preoperative casting if the foot is tight. Uh, about three to four casts is usually what I will do. Often, uh, these children are uh, slightly bigger and they struggle. And uh, sometimes it hurts when you um, manipulate the foot uh, vigorously. So I tend to do them under general anesthesia. And the end point really is uh, to have uh, complete um, obliteration of the uh, tailor head prominence. Uh, lateral border needs to be straight, but slightly uh, curved lateral border I would accept. And abduction of 50 degrees and dorsiflexion of about 15 degrees. Uh, when the procedure is done uh, under general anesthesia, child is placed supine on the operating table. You use a pneumatic tour tourniquet. And sometimes if the ankle dorsiflexion is uh, slightly restricted, I'd add a percutaneous uh, TA release to uh, get a little additional uh, dorsiflexion, which will help uh, in the functioning of the tendon transfer. Well, the incision is medial, uh, it's anteromedial, and uh, that's, that's uh, how it looks. It's a small incision right uh, over the where the tendon lies. And you do a little dissection uh, to expose the 
soft tissues and the tendon. Once uh, you're done with that, you can use a, a slightly deeper dissection to expose the tendon, bring it into view, and then uh, use a scissor to really, uh, you know, lift the tendon off and uh, dissect it down to the uh, down to the insertion into the uh, cuneiform and the first metatarsal base. Well, once the tendon is uh, fully exposed, uh, you use a scissor to just snip off the insertion from the cuneiform and the metatarsal, and you can see that's the tendon uh, which has been released. Once that's done, you take bundle sutures through the tendon just to have a uh, grip on it and help in the um, uh, transfer. And that's how the, uh, the bundle sutures are taken. And uh, once you've done that, uh, you just uh, dissect a little proximally to release the adhesions uh, so that you can get a smooth exertion, uh, excursion of the uh, tendon. Well, once that's done, you're done with the medial side and then you want to go on to the lateral. Uh, you make an incision which is centered over the lateral cuneiform. I uh, just put a pointer on that and you can visualize on the image that you are uh, somewhere there. It's usually in line with the fourth ray uh, and it's a dorsolateral incision. Um, that's the dissection that you do. You have to lift off the extensor digitorum brevis from the lateral side and you have to stay lateral to the extensor tendons. And uh, once uh, the cuneiform is exposed, uh, you basically just uh, tunnel uh, artery forceps and pull out the suture from the medial side, and that will bring the tendon onto the lateral side. And you're going under the extensor digitorum brevis and uh, superficial to the other uh, extensor tendon. So once the tendon has been pulled out onto the lateral side, you, you want to mark the point of transfer, which is uh, the center of the third cuneiform. And you do that with a needle. And uh, I use a hypodermic needle and I'll poke it into the cuneiform. And then I will just confirm looking at the image intensifier that I'm in the right spot. So once you're sure that that's the point where you want to transfer your tendon, you use a little cautery and put a mark on it. And uh, that burn mark is where you're really going to make the hole where the tendon is going to get transferred. So uh, once you're sure uh, of the point of entry, you take a drill and uh, you make a hole into the uh, cuneiform and you can uh, use sequential drilling to about a four millimeters because the tendon is pretty thick and you want to uh, really make sure that it uh, slides through the hole that you've made uh, smoothly. So once the hole is made, you take a needle, it's a straight needle, you thread the uh, uh, bundle suture uh, threads through the needle and then uh, make it go through the, uh, and pass the needle through the hole that you drilled. And that's how uh, we are doing it. We are trying to pass the tendon uh, into the hole so that needle is going in. And you want to poke the needle out on the medial side into the arch of the foot medially. And you'll see it come out in a minute. So just dorsiflex and abduct the foot a little and you poke the needle out onto the medial side, there it's coming out. And once the thread comes out, you uh, uh, pass it through a felt and uh, then thread the ends of the manal suture through a, uh, a button. Okay, so that's the button being uh, threaded into the Threads, and then uh, you pull the suture on on to the from the sole, and you just glide the tendon through the hole that you made, and it should glide in smoothly, so that it shouldn't be like a, a tight uh, tight fit. So once the tendon has gone into the uh, hole that you drilled in, then you just uh, tie the sutures over the button, maintaining the tension, and you want to abduct and uh, dorsiflex the foot maximally so that you get the maximum uh, tension in the tendon. Okay, so that's the tendon tied, and then you uh, just check the tension in the suture uh, and by looking at the tension in the tendon that you uh, transferred. So that you can feel it with your finger and it holds the foot in a corrected position. Okay, once that's done, I will typically put some holding sutures uh, in the tendon and in the um, soft tissue over the lateral cuneiform, just to make sure that the tendon doesn't slide through or if the suture breaks, 
uh, you're sure at least that the tendon is in the right place and it doesn't slide out of the hole that you made. And once that's done, uh, it's uh, really just closing the incision. I'll uh, typically put absorbable sutures on the medial and lateral side and then uh, go ahead and cast it in full correction. So it's full uh, dorsiflexion, full abduction, external rotation. Uh, Follow-up protocol is uh, remove the cast at six weeks. After that, uh, we uh, typically will allow these children free walking and uh, advise exercises for the transfer tendon. Repeat visits are at one, three, six, and 12 months. And usually by about nine months, uh, you can see the effect of your transfer. Okay, I'm gonna end with that. If there are any questions, I'll be happy.